Bing, bing, bing. bing. It's stat time of the month. Stat time of the month. It's stat time. <laughs> yeah. Carrie, what do we got this month? Because we're going to get right into this. It's already 421. And it's, yeah, it's dark out. Could you imagine? Heaven is a way it's dark out. I know. Doesn't it feel like it's 7 o'clock at night now that, like, it's like 10 o'clock? I feel like it's 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Now. No, yeah. It feels much later than it is. When you go is. home, I know. Do you feel like exhausted when you go out and, and you're like in the dark? Yeah, I just want to like lay in bed and do like nothing. Is that it? I don't want to do anything. I know. I really got to push through to like I know. I'm really gonna do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That time of year, it's like. But it is the holiday season. Thanksgiving's coming up, guys. Hopefully, yes. everybody has a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. And a happy shopping Friday. Oh, it's next week, Thanksgiving, right? Yes, it is, Carrie. Wow. Uh, I know, you're not cooking. Well, <laughs> well. well, you know the day already. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody else is supposed to know. So anyway, um, guys, we're going to go over the stats for the month. A um, couple of bits of tidbit news. Um, well, we're going to do more of an official announcement tomorrow. Oh, yes. We, the Prodigy Real Estate, have reached our 2,000 subscriber on YouTube. Woo! Putting us in the top 5%, top 5% of all YouTube channels and... If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you need to go do that. Yes, it's growing exp exponentially. We'll be doing more stuff in the coming year, so we hope you guys are part of that. Um, so, okay, not on our YouTube. Um, now people are starting to join uh, TikTok. Yeah, I see. A little, it's like a little, yeah. little delayed. Um, so I hope everyone um, subscribes. So. Go to, our, again, a YouTube channel is reached a critical benchmark. We're at, we're over 20, we're, we're getting close to 25,000 views a month on YouTube. That's insane. 25,000. That is insane. A month viewing. So, um, and that's a lot of, a lot of hard work. Um, hopefully we can get to that. I think, like, we need to get to that, like, on TikTok. So guys, if you don't yeah. like and subscribe, like, we're gonna like call you out on you. <laughs> so anyway, um, but what we're here today is to discuss is the stats for the month of October, because everything comes out, right, a month. We can't do November's month, because yeah. November's not over. Yeah, exactly. So we have to go. <coughs> yeah, to do go do the stats for this month. Um, so let's get into some of the numbers. I know that you have spent arduous amount of hours putting this together. Yeah. It's just, a lot of you could tell that I could just see the sweat rolling off your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just to get those numbers in. But let's get into it and um, we can get started. Oh, goodness. You know, I like to see myself on, on you. Like, one of the things we always have, and one day we're going to get like the screen that goes above. Like, yeah. that you could actually see, like, all the streams at once. That would be pretty cool. I mean, we definitely I mean, we may, not, we may lose Carrie for, like, an hour as she's, like, just staring at the screen. I know. <laughs> it's yeah. bad enough as, like, this. It's, like, so far enough where she can't read the, you uh, know, <laughs> read, read, read the comment section. Um, oh, there it goes my, my TikTok. But, um, anyway, yeah, let's I'll get into it. Let's jump right into it. Um, so I'm going to start off with the average days on the market yes. that, um, is at a 13, 13% de decrease year over year, but it is up, um, about 10% month over month. So it's 67 days on the market. 67 days. So what's the question? <laughs> You gave me the numbers, you didn't ask you the question. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, um, 
Do you want me to fill that in for you? Yeah. I guess I'm going to have to come and do the same deal. It was, the numbers are correct, yes. Yes. <laughs> if you're not used to Carrie's clumsiness, you got to watch your dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, this comment sections. What is, is it? She, oh god. Okay. What is it? No, I'm not telling you. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're making fun of you falling off the chair. No. <laughs> we'll put that on like a loop. So. We'll... No, that would be horrible. Add it into the bloopers. Yes, it'll be the blooper reel. Yeah. For sure. Um, okay, so. So the sales, the media, the media itself, um, why don't you repeat that question? Yeah, I will. You nearly fell off a chair into the abyss and we're trying to get that off. We lost Carrie there for a second, no. literally and figuratively. No, I think that I called myself. Okay. So the average days on the market okay. have decreased year over year uh, 13%. Mm -hmm. and increased about 10% month over month. Okay, so basically year over year, decrease and increase. Um, you know, so this is, this is a, we've talked about this before and if you catch all the lives, um, we basically have said that the market is in a state of uh, of interest rate sensitivity. So basically, whatever the market is doing, um, as far as like uh, going in any direction, it is purely interest rate driven. So one of the things was the Fed did cut rates um, a three quarters, three quarters of a point. There's someone trying to distract us for sure. Three quarters of a point over the last two months. <laughs> you can't see. Don't worry about it. Um, but three quarters of a point, and what's going to happen um, when you get a three quarters of a point decrease is the expectation that interest rates will go down subsequent to that. That hasn't happened. Um, there's a multitude of reasons why. They did start to head down this week. Um, and hopefully over the next course of the next few weeks, they continuously move down because the only thing that's making housing affordable to the degree that you can make it is interest rates. And for everybody out there, the market is, is definitely one of the things that we do check. And like, there's a lot of things you could check to see like market activity. I did do a deep dive this month into Google search trends. So Google search trends is a really good example. So I like to like look at trends to see like what people are searching for. <coughs> and they put that out every now and again. And one of the things that came up was, um, and you can see the Google search trends associated with Mark with the interest rate decreases. Uh, the interest rate decreases, searches go up. As they go up, searches go down. That's how, and it bears that in the numbers. So, um, deep dive. Um, no, you're not looking at that. Forget it. I don't even want to see it. Yeah. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the local people on Facebook are like, oh, geez, what are these guys actually doing? Yeah. yeah. So, but the big thing is, is that it's interest rate driven, interest rate sensitive. So what's going to happen is, is basically... Um, the market's kind of a little bit on the slower side than it has been maybe in the months to seasonal too. Throw that on top of seasonal activity, it's slower. So those people who are like saying, oh, geez, there's not much going on. Yeah, I mean, it's there's people out there buying, there's no doubt about it, but it's definitely put a little damper on things. Mm -hmm. Hence why the average days on the market trended up month over month. That really has to do with interest rates, and it shows, bears that out very clearly in the numbers. A 9% increase month over month, even though for the year it was down 12% uh, overall, but 9% of that uh, resuming its upward climb from 61 to 67 days here on Staten Island. And actually part of Brooklyn uh, is part of this MLS, so um, it's not totally exclusive to Staten Island. Mm -hmm. What's next? Next is the month's inventory. 
few months inventory has decreased year over year um, about 12% and has decreased month over month almost 4%. Yeah, so I guess, yeah, when we look at the month's inventory, this is how much it would take for a house to come off the market. Um, like, <laughs> How much would it cost for, like, how much time would it take for all the inventory that's currently available if we didn't put a house on the market from here forward? How much, how long would it take to sell off? Is basically at uh, three, a little, little over, a little under four months now, um, which is interesting. That's kind of creeped up a bit um, after a, a very robust. September, October, seen which was down, it was down to three ninety eight due to a higher volume of sales. But October it did increase uh, quite a bit um, from twenty twenty three. It's come off. Oh, excuse me, from twenty twenty three till now, it's come down a bit. So yeah, it's definitely there's no there's no relief for buyers. Guys, are you making bids based on this? I'm going to tell you right now. Chances are based on the numbers here. That month's inventory number has seen a precipitous decline, both month over month, year over year, meaning that chances are you're winning bids or people are not are waiting on the market. Um, probably won't work out for you too well. So I, I'm recommending that people understand that this is actually driving more into the seller's market phase, stronger, even stronger than it was than maybe uh, a year ago at this time. Mm -hmm. Um, what factors are driving the increased demand on Staten Island as indicated by faster sales and reduced inventory? Um, limited availability is really just the, the driving factor behind. Mm -hmm. so, because when we look at, we look at sold listings, sold listings up year over year only 2%. So it's not like, this is a low volume, low inventory market. It's not like anybody's jumping there's nobody jumping through hoops to buy houses. The, the, the perception is that this is a, an odd seller's market. Basically, it's a market, if you took a market and sliced it down into a, like into like quarters, <laughs> basically you've taken two, month, two quarters of, uh, of the, a half of it, of inventory away and half of buyer interest is away. So, it doesn't correlate to anything that's really saying, okay, uh, I would say that it, it's, it, this is one of the oddest markets you'll ever see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've been doing, this is, oh, what is it, 19 years, I'm aging myself, 18, 18, 19 years of doing this. Wow, 2025 will be 20. Yeah, so 19 years, could you imagine? Yeah. Years of doing this, but anyway, the big thing is is that what you want to look at is basically the um, the 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 market is just a small it, it's tracked and made a small track, and it really doesn't really go much beyond that. Someone said, "Hey, hi, how are you?" Hello. I don't know. Okay, hope you're having a blessed day. We are. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so the next thing that I would like to talk about is the sale to price, sale to list price ratio. So the sale to list price ratio um, has actually changed 0.21 both year over year, month over month. So it's at uh, 97.7. Yeah. In October. This hasn't really moved much at all. For the last two and a half years, we really have not seen any increase. Um, and again, I keep getting a super thing. Um, okay, fine. I'm good. Okay. I'm sure she appreciates the kudos, Anthony. <laughs> but she's, she's, she's trying to really. Thank God. She, just so you know, she can't read the comments and that's a good thing. No, I can't. And I, I'm happy about that because then she'd be completely distracted by what's going on. I know, on the but screen. I think I saw yeah. Tom doing this. Did you so, see Tom? I think I oh, did. Man. <laughs> Tom, if, you, if you're there, wave your hand, go like this. 
don't know. I think I saw it. Maybe that's what I'm saying all the love. Um, so anyway. Uh, but um, so I did have a question about this. Yes. So given the consistent sale to list price ratio, what pricing strategies are most successful in this competitive market? Um, you know, I've kind of looked to what where we are with like pending the pending average and where the pending average listing is selling at and where people are actually putting their houses at. Mm -hmm. The new average listing price is nine hundred and twelve thousand dollars. So and it's consistently it's out it's overperform this is what people are asking is overperforming the market mm -hmm. by Eight and a half percent year over year. <laughs> year over year and five percent month over month. So basically, people are overpricing the house by about eight percent at this point. Wow. So basically, that's how far, like, people are really seriously putting their houses way over where they're likely to sell. The strategy is is that. Contrary to belief that this is an absolute great seller's market, the buyers that are out there are so limited that you're not going to fool anybody and people are willing to wait. I think people think that um, it's not that say you can't be competitively priced on the higher end of things, but you have to be within a range. You really don't want to exceed what I consider to be like a 4% range. And if you're going past 4% of where it's likely to sell, now you may be able to achieve that, to a great marketing, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, but the big thing is, can you, um, like, can you still achieve the number you'd like to get with some moderation? So you have to really think of it in terms of, you have to be competitive to the degree, you don't want to be sitting there for too long at a uncompetitive price just because you think that, well, I'm the only house on the block. I'm not saying that at some point in the future, um, your house, it uh, won't achieve some benchmark number. It's just not likely to happen in any short short term. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I mean, from Tita, we were just talking before. I was doing the stats. I remember saying to you, I did the stats back in 2013, 2012. The average sale price on Staten Island was at $360,000. So it's up to, what, 380 yeah, so the average sale price is seven hundred eighty thousand. Wow. October. That's yeah, not high. That's, will... that's a record breaker. Average sale, yeah. That's um. That's the highest ever. Yeah. So we broke the record on Staten Island for uh, sold average sale price seven eighty. Yeah. But I'm sure you you're going to ask more about that. I jump ahead. Yeah. So that... I'm out of control. <laughs> So yeah, any, uh, the sold average sale has increased um, year over year, seven point thirty percent, and month over month, uh, three point fifty percent. So yeah, I think yeah. it's the highest. Um, um, so high, it's a record breaker. Mm -hmm. And the new average listing prices. Yeah, we're, we're approaching a million dollars for an average listing price on that now. Do you imagine yeah. that? No. You have to buy, you need a million dollars to buy a house. And then the average house. I'm a long way. No. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll have Terry but, Famous very shortly. But, uh, very shortly. The um, sold medium listing, though, so that also has increased. <laughs> Uh, what, what's the best way to squat now? Squat is right. Uh, squat goes back. I answer those questions. <laughs> if, you, if you're on, obviously, it's a much more, much more entertaining audience on TikTok. Yes. God, I can't get that one. Um, <laughs> anyway. The uh, sold median listing. So that has increased year over year. Um, 8% and it's increased 5% month over month, that's all being listing. There's no, there is no stop in this market. Um, I've talked about this before, if you don't know, 
Um, me and Vic did a, a live on this before about sentiment in the real estate market and the price of Bitcoin correlating with, with, with the broader kind of economy. Mm-hmm. And everybody who knows that we talked about this before, it's a good sense of like a direction because there's, there's a lot of retail based investment in, in those assets. So there's some hopium in the market that this is going to continue. Um, the real estate market is going to continue its upwards ascent. And I would cons- really consider, we always look at, there's so many factors, there's a lot of tea leaves. And we like to look at all of them uh, because there's never, consumer sentiment is a big part of real estate. So if people are feeling good, it doesn't even matter if it's exorbitantly high price. And high price is a relative term because at one time people thought 450,000 was high price for house. Wow. Yeah. Now we're up with near a million, so. Yeah. I mean, uh, the sold average listing is up also. Yeah. That's um, up year over year, 7% and month over month, 3%. The sold average sale. Yeah. This is, that's the 780 we talked about, right? No, that's the sold average listing. Okay, so you have sold average listing and you're here. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah, that's what I said, said earlier, 912,000 they put in their house. So yeah, forth. that's insane. Most. You got a crack the piggy bank. I told her to buy Bitcoin, by the way. You did. But it was about 42. <laughs> I'm like, Jerry, you got to. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell everybody this. I hate to say this. It's going to be a new asset class, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. I, I, and I was a complete. I, I didn't believe it at all at one time. I remember talking about Bitcoin back in 2013, 14, uh, 14, 15. And like it had this colossal drop. And it was like, it went from like, 15,000 all the way down to like 3,000. Wow. And like everybody's like, oh, this is the doom. It is, it, it's just, the one thing that's outperformed real estate as, a, as an asset class, as any class, that's the number one performing asset in the world for the last thousand years. So if you could think of that. So like people like to all dismiss, oh yeah, it's, it's the best performing asset class in uh, like modern history. So like it outperformed gold, it outperformed silver, wow. it outperformed bonds, it outperformed, it's the single largest growing asset class, which should be, I think we're at a point, we're at a junction now where it's really, it's no longer a foregone conclusion that this is going to be part of the landscape of not only real estate, um, but monetary policy, monetary systems. We're going to really, there's going to be, Bitcoin's going to play a role. Uh, I think we've, we've reached that, this critical mass and critical juncture ETS. And it's going to impact real estate because, um, it's very deflationary, and we're still in what I consider to be a pretty high inflationary atmosphere. So um, one of the things that uh, I like to say is you, when you're in that type of asset class, assets in high inflationary environments are uh, fixed. And the thing about why, uh, when, I know we're doing stats, but the thing about why, um, you know, I'm out of the time, I know it's what? Uh, four, four, five. I've got time. A few minutes. Mm-hmm. Is that um, it's not so much that house prices are going up or milk is going up or your food is going up. It's the. It's what's the, the it, so people say, oh, prices are going up. They're not going up in the way you think about it. Your money's going down. <laughs> so. It's the value of the money that you kind of, and this is why it's imperative to start getting the financial houses in order because we, I think it's probably, I think the last four or five, six years, and it's been going on since, since, uh, since 19, basically since we got off the gold standard, since 1970, 
the dollar's lost a hundred and like five percent of its value. Um, so basically, it lost. It, it, it's it's like pennies compared to what it could buy just you know fifty years ago. And so the house prices. When you get a house price, and you say, "Oh well, it's, it's expensive," it's expensive relative to uh, a fixed asset because houses don't really do anything different year to year. So any any really appreciation has to do with either people moving in. Uh, and there's a demand for jobs or whatever, or the value of what you're using to buy it is going down. There's no other houses don't change their very function because they're a house. It's not like buying a stock. They're like there's a you know they're they're making a product and they're improving upon it. Mm -hmm. I mean yes, you can improve a house to degree it, but the principal reason for living in it is the reason why it makes it valuable, and that's all it can do. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't make anything else. So uh, the, the so the premise that like housing prices are going up is kind of like saying why milk is going up, why going out to dinner is going up, the value of the dollar is going down. Hence why there's this big Bitcoin run and all this stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's it's a fixed, uh, very, very little, there is a little bit of inflation baked in, um, but uh, it seems to be that sovereign governments now are starting to put their, they start to hedge their bets on it. So I do think that, um, it, you know, uh, salutations, um, yes, okay. I love your expressions. See, you, this, you have a thousand expressions. I don't, I didn't realize until today. <laughs> Never read about what Carrie will tell you what she's thinking through her expressions, not through her mouth. <laughs> I don't have a focus. She doesn't. She just, you'll know what she's thinking. If you ask her a question, she doesn't answer and she makes a face. She doesn't really need to see much more. <laughs> yes. That's something new I've learned over the time of being here, which I think we would set us off. Yeah. Over to you. Oh, God. My, my, I was saying how our first lives, my beard was a little bit more. Pronounced <laughs> in color. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's see. That's a, let's see. What we got Bitcoin is going to 100k. So yeah, I, I think I think it's going to go beyond that. Um, and I mean, the cycle is obviously bouncing back and forth, but it's an asset class. It's like owning a piece of real estate. To be honest with you, I think the same premise exists because it's and people, people will argue about what this is mm -hmm. so I, I don't want to make this a bitcoin movie here but you know our show about bitcoin mm -hmm. but it's a fixed asset just like a house um and it's deflationary and at the end of the day what makes the the, the thing unique about what's going on and it was going to impact real estate because i do believe that if you're going to save for a house that someone like your age, for instance, in order to keep up with your savings, because mm -hmm. the savings rate isn't keeping up with inflation. So you're losing money, where I don't think that's the case with Bitcoin. Um, and the idea is when you put the money in the bank, it's like, okay, I have money. Mm -hmm. And people are used to numbers in, in everything. So they get, they get over, everybody's sensitive to, well, oh, it's $10,000. But ten thousand dollars is all relative. What else? What its purchasing power is and what it looks like. So, it, like, and people, we're kind of trained this way. The brain is trained this way, and it's really not the case. We we, we, we get lost on the idea that number is really the yes. I mean, it, it adds the the, the 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 sticker to it that makes you know something appear a certain way. But it's actually the value is what's backing each of these, of the item. Um, how long it took to produce. And the biggest thing is that someone, uh, and I'm gonna tell you, I, I really believe this. The thing about Bitcoin that makes it different than buying gold, which people are like, oh, you're out buy gold, is that it's, it's shardable. Like, the thing about it is not like you buy a whole Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You buy it like, you could buy $15 worth. It's, it's, it's fractional. Mm -hmm. So. And the accessibility to 
what I call a small investor or the small, the small guy who says, okay, I don't want to put more than two. Now I have to buy a, like a, a um, a shard of, like, it's hard to, to shard down a piece of gold. Uh, so you either buy gold at 2000 something something dollars on a note, or you don't buy it. Where Bitcoin is more f- flexible in terms of what the value is. That may change, but it keeps going up. It's, only, it's broken into a smaller fraction, so it's not like someone has to buy a $90,000 Bitcoin. Yeah. They can still buy, you know, maybe five five dollars worth and it's still it, you know it still will go up based on um the sentiment um of holding fixed assets which is the reason why this is not no so people think this is all fine money it's really not it's there's enough like i said value does if anybody tells you <laughs> just like everything else everybody values something and if enough people value it it makes it real. Yes. That's it. I can't say it. Someone says this is a table. We call it a table because somebody else before us called it a table. And now we all developed a consensus that this is a table. And that's how we wound up with the word. Table. And that's the same thing with this one. It's a table. You know it's a table. I know it's a table because that's what we all agreed to mm-hmm. saying what it is. It's the same thing with big ones. Yeah. And the biggest consensus was, was there are enough people who are going to say this is the thing or this wasn't. We, we passed the paradigm for that, I think, at this point. And I think it's just on base the fact that ETFs are out. It, it, it's Pandora's box now. It's all open. 100,000, uh, you know, maybe in, maybe today you'll look back and your grandkids will say, oh, grandma's a multi-millionaire. She put uh, 200,000 Bitcoin back in. Uh, <laughs> and she's and it grew to the point where it's like it's a it's a new asset class, yeah. and it really is. So the people really, is, it, I don't care what the price is now. I think it's probably one of the most unique opportunities because I think it's the advent of the next generation of money. And I think that's where the money's going. Well, I'm not to say there will be competitors to that, but I do think it's established itself now. It's like it's gotten too big to really change. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're at. Um, and we have only a few more minutes left. Yep. So, so about three minutes. The last thing, one of the last things that I want to go over is the um, pending listing. So mm-hmm. pending listings are up almost 11% year over year and up 19% month over month. I am sorry. What? Leave that again. <laughs> I said, I, I'm now I'm the one getting distracted by comments. <laughs> um, you know my answer. Okay. She's so, not allowed to read comments. She, she's been she's been censored from, <laughs> from from reading comments on this. So uh, guys, you could text all you like. I can't read them. Yeah. I'm she's, too blind. She's, yes, and she can't get laser vision <laughs> correction. <laughs> but the um. So what I was saying was that the uh, pending sales are up about almost 11% year over year and up 19% month over month. Yeah, it's a good sign because that, that's a direct reflection of interest rates. That will go down next month, guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> guaranteed next month it's gonna be down because interest rates peaked above like close to seven when they were almost like 6.35. And to all people out there, it's like, I've said this before, they try to time the market. Oh, well, it's just come down and try to put up the house. By the time you put up the house, get it up for ready for sale, guess what? Usually, that's how volatile the interest rate swings are. So if you miss it, you miss it. If you don't, you cannot time this out. It's it's proven futile. And it's like, so like, a lot of people now will say, oh, well, interest rates are high, I won't put the market, put the house in the market. It takes a little while just to get the house in the market. And usually by the time people put the house on the market, sometimes those rates go such plummeting and all of a sudden you get a whole bunch of people ready to buy very quickly. And then the people was like, oh, let's wait till the rates bottom out. They put the house on the market and the rates have already come down to a bottom. And then the, the three weeks following, the rates have been going up steadily. And I'm telling you right now that, it, that the difference between the numbers that we're seeing, and we've repeated this multiple times, 
is that the whole entire market is rate sensitive. So you could you could swing your your own value in your house four or five percent week to week. Week to week, this changes. That's how volatile the 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 house. Sorry. My neck, I need to crack. <laughs> I'm going to crack your neck right after this. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> this is a song that I heard you can get <laughs> when you lose focus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's going on a blooper reel. I, I, I'm definitely getting you cracking your neck <laughs> on my camera. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize. I didn't realize I do. That's how. That's the level of comfort she's gotten here. Familiarity is done bread content no, for sure. Exactly. I have her on a first video, and she was like, she would, she didn't even move. <laughs> now she's doing three thousand things. It's like no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't know I was doing that. I have to. <laughs> we'll just have to get like a, a king. <laughs> anyway, that's what we have for tonight, guys. I hope you found this interesting. Like I said, 2,000 followers on 2,000 subscribers. That's more than just followers. Subscribers on YouTube is one of the hardest achievements to obtain. We got it, guys. We hit a benchmark. Thanks for people yes. subscribe. Please go out, subscribe. Please subscribe. And you'll get some of the best, um, all entertaining videos of places all over New Jersey and Staten Island. You yeah. got a whole entire background of places you never knew existed. So it's a good place to explore. So that's what we have for tonight, guys. And we'll see you probably next week with New Jersey in the pre-Thanksgiving Day uh, Jersey edition. <laughs> yes. Uh, which will be on Wednesday next week. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like, you know, it'd be the closing before Turkey Day. Yeah. Anyway, um, have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you Friday. Yes, Friday. Yes. Don't <laughs> worry. Yep. She's going to have a neck straightened out by then. I guarantee you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, bye. Good night, bye. guys. <laughs>